Before I call this meeting to order, let me introduce myself. My name is Cesar Perales. Uh, I'm a member of the board and I have the pleasure of serving as acting chair for today's meeting. I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the New York State Urban Development Corporation doing business as the Empire State Development for Thursday, April 18th, 2019. As noted on the agenda posted in the internet, we welcome public comment on the items on our agenda. To ensure maximum opportunity for participation, speakers representing themselves may speak for up to two minutes each. Those representing groups may speak up to four minutes with one speaker per group. Speakers' comments may only address the items considered at today's meeting. At this time, I will ask directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest with, with respect to any of the items on the agenda. If so, I will ask you to please make an appropriate disclosure on the record now, and we will then remind you to recuse yourself from any discussion or vote with regard to such an item. Are there any conflicts? No. Hearing none, as always, directors have received the written materials in advance of today's meeting, and they are free to ask questions at any time during the presentations. The first item on today's agenda is the approval of the minutes of March 28, 2019, <coughs> Director's Meeting. So moved. Second. Any opposed? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's approved. Now, uh, thank you. That motion carries. We will now move to the report section of the agenda. And before we proceed to the presentation of the project agendas, I will ask Glendon McCleary to present a summary of those projects. Glendon, are you ready? Yes, thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, the directors will be requested to consider 15 projects totaling $46,332,759 in grants. The projects include one Buffalo Billion Award, 13 Regional Council Awards, and five discretionary awards. The project will take place in the Western New York, Central New York, Mohawk Valley, Southern Tier, Long Island, Finger Lakes, and New York City regions, leverage over $351 million of additional investment, retain 2,525 jobs, and create 738 jobs in the state. Thank you. Thank you, Lagan. We will now move to the projects section of the agenda. I will note uh, that the first project to be presented is from the Western New York region and will be presented by Amanda Mays. Amanda, are you ready? Yes, good morning. Proceed. The directors are, re are requested to approve a grant of up to $2.5 million from the Buffalo Regional Innovation Cluster, Buffalo Billion II, to the village of Fredonia in Chautauqua County for smart growth enhancements to its central business district. Fredonia is the third of four recipients of funding through the Smart Growth Community Fund for 2019, a program through which applicants from Western New York to the statewide DRI competition were automatically eligible if they were not selected as the regional winner. In 2018, the REDC reviewed in the remaining municipality proposals for project readiness and impact and selected four winners for up to $2.5 million each. The grant to the village of Fredonia will be used to undertake a placemaking initiative that will improve the central business distri district surrounding Barker Commons, which previously received a regional council capital fund award through the CFA process. Funding will aid design and construction of features including traffic calming measures, crosswalk enhancements, pedestrian and bicycle amenities, and other enhancements to the streetscape. In addition, funding will aid a new phase of improvements to the 1891 Opera House, that will address interior and exterior issues in the historic building, improving the structure and its status as a driver for tourism and culture in the village and the region. The directors are also being asked to make a determination of no significant impact on the environment pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Are there any questions or comments from the directors with regard to this item? Are there any comments from the public? If not, I will entertain a motion for approval. Move. Second. Aye. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is approved. Uh, 
James Fail is up next, and he will present two items from the central New York region. Jim, you on? Good morning. <clears throat> the uh, first item that the uh, directors are being asked to approve is a $600,000 grant on a $3.3 million project to TCG Players, Inc. This grant was used to renovate and equip a 44,500 square foot new global headquarters for this company that is involved in the collectible gaming products. Uh, the project is scheduled to be fully complete in September 2019. However, many of the employees have already moved in there. This project is going to create a total of 269 jobs. Currently, they have employed 203 jobs and this was a priority project of the regional council. The second grant is a $1 million grant on a $16.5 million project to Housing Vision Consultants, Inc. And this was to renovate a 144,000 square foot historic building in downtown Cortland for mixed use purposes. Uh, two thirds of the building will be for commercial and a third for residential, which will include both market rate and low-income housing. Currently, it is 77% occupied. This project was completed in December of 2018 and was also a priority project of the Regional Economic Development Council. So I'd be glad to entertain any questions. Are there any questions? I just have a, on, on the, um, the TCG, um, on 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 that project in in the um, book it says that Georgia was a competitor what is it what does that mean that the they were deciding between New York State and Georgia is that yes yeah they they had uh, they have a presence a small presence currently in Georgia but that was um, uh, you know as this company was looking to do its expansion that was a, a consideration for them as well thank you any other questions from the directors? Are there any questions from the public? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve both items. Move. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? This motion is carried. We'll now hear from Allison Nowak, who will present two projects from the Mohawk Valley region. Allison? Good morning. Uh, the first project the directors are being asked to approve is a grant of up to $1.2 million from Round 5 of the Regional Council Capital Fund to Century Linen and Uniform to be used for a portion of the cost of the purchase of machinery and equipment. The company was founded in 1915 as Robinson and & Smith and was rebranded in 2015 as Century Linen and Uniform Incorporated. Century Linen and Uniform Production facilities are in Gloversville and in Johnstown. They are the second largest employer in both cities. The company has outgrown its facilities in Gloversville. This location is their primary production location, housing 90% of their operations. The old facility was built in the 1930s and was no longer capable of sustaining the company's expansion. Additionally, the equipment housed at the old facility was nearing the end of its useful life, and new equipment was deemed critical to the company's ability to compete and stay in business. Installation of new equipment at the company's existing Gloversville facility would have required significant retro fitting and facility improvements to accommodate the new equipment. During the time that these improvements were to be implemented, Century would have had great difficulty operating and would have been at high risk of losing existing customers. To accommodate their expansion and equipment upgrades, the company was able to lease a 50,000 square foot facility only three miles away from its old facility in Gloversville. The total budget for this project is four four million six hundred and sixty thousand and the project was complete in February of 2019. The project is consistent with the MVRADC strategy to support business investments that create and retain jobs for the Mohawk Valley's diverse workforce. And the second project the directors are being asked to approve is a grant of up to $680,000 from round seven of the Regional Council Capital Fund to JBF Stainless to be used for a portion of the cost of constructing and relocating to a new 38,750,000 ,000 square foot manufacturing facility. This incentive was accepted in February of 2018. 
JBF Stainless manufactures custom engineered stainless steel processing tanks with heat transfer wall panels and ag agitators for food, dairy, beverage, and cosmetic providers across the country. JBF Stainless primary customers are engineering firms that design and oversee the construction of food manufacturing plants and food manufacturing companies themselves. The company outgrew its leased facility in Frankfurt and looked at various sites to locate a new facility. They originally planned for a 27,000 square foot facility, but ultimately decided to build a 38,750 square foot facility to better provide for future growth. JBF Stainless pledged to retain 27 jobs and create 10 jobs, and they currently have surpassed their job commitment, cre creating 13 new positions. The total budget for the project is $3,820,680 and the project was complete in February of 2019. The project is consistent with the MBREDC strategy to support STEM intensive industries and traded sectors to ensure that manufacturers have the resources available to meet growing global demand and remain on the cutting edge of technology. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Allison. Are there any questions from the directors? Are there any questions from the public? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion for approval of both items. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. We'll hear from Donna Howell from our Southern Tier region. She's got one item. Donna? Good morning. Thank you. Um, this morning, the director requested to approve a grant of up to $1.5 million to the village of Watkins Glen as part of their 10 million downtown revitalization initiative or the DRI award. Um, this portion of their award will be used for the cost of street lights that are consistent with the historical character of the village's story downtown um, right on uh, Cayuga Lake. Um, in 2016, Watkins Glen was named the round two uh, DRI winner through a competitive regional council process. Uh, through that initiative, several priority projects were identified, uh, including expansion of the lighting standards throughout the downtown core right on franklin street the lights are historically reminiscent of the downtown's founding uh, and replicate designs from the original gas lights although of course they're not going to be using gas uh, the lights complement other dri design profiles as well as dot projects on the white walkways um, and some streetscape uh, beautification projects uh, these projects along with the anticipation of uh, the revitalized uh, lights have already attracted over two million in downtown investments outside of the DRI and public funding. So just extra projects that were induced. Without the DRI funding, this project would not be possible. Um, and the project is consistent with our Southern Tier uh, Regional Council's plan to invest in our downtowns and promote the region's tourism assets. The village plans to install the new street lighting this summer in advance of highly attended events. And I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from the directors about uh, Watkins Glen? <laughs> Any questions from the uh, public? <coughs> Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Move. Anyone seconds it? Second. Aye. All right. <laughs> I'm early. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. I know you're new here. <laughs> we will now hear from uh, Steve Gold, who will present an item from our Long Island office. Steve. Thank you, and good morning. We are seeking approval of a $13.3 million Jobs Now capital grant for a $148 million project with Broadridge Financial Solutions. Broadridge is a provider of investor communications and technology-driven solutions for broker-dealers, banks, mutual funds, and corporate issuers globally. The company automates the equity trading life cycle from execution to accounting, manages how companies connect with investors, and provides predictive analytics to advance client growth. Broadridge employs 10,000 at 40 offices across the globe, including 24 locations in the U.S. In New York, the company maintains a small executive office in Lake Success, Nassau County, a 1,700-person operations and technology center in Edgewood, Suffolk County, and several small offices in the metro New York region. The Edgewood facility is in an area long targeted for economic development. In 2017, Broadridge initiated a significant transformation of its business 
centered on digitizing the delivery of its paper-based products and the development of new revenue streams. In order to support that effort, the company was deciding whether to reinvest and expand its outdated Edgewood operations or to downsize in New York while expanding at its more modern facilities in Coppell, Texas, Kansas City, Missouri, and outside of Hartford, Connecticut. The New York option would include over $148 million in new capital investment and save over 800 positions at risk of relocating out of state, while adding over 300 new jobs over five years in IT, business analytics, and client services. In order to encourage Broadridge to undertake this expansion in New York, ESD offered the company a $13.3 million Jobs Now grant and Excelsior tax credits valued at up to $14.1 million tied to job creation. Since the project commenced, nearly 120 of the projected 300 new jobs have been created. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions from the directors? Eric? Um, just for some clarification, Broadridge does the, the back office operations for financial services, or they do some of the trading themselves? I'm a little bit unclear. They do investor communications and services for companies that trade. Got it. So, so those companies are outsourcing to Broadridge? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're one of the biggest um, investor communications and related service companies. Very much behind the scenes, though. Right. Behind okay. Your proxies are things you receive in the mail from uh, different equities you might have. No, no, the reason why I ask is because a lot of the financial service companies have moved their back offices outside of New York State. So, so that, you know, this is a sort of reverse in that. Right. Um, well, the back office they have is in a very targeted, uh, challenged area of Suffolk County, a former Empire Zone area. Right. Um, and, but yet even that has proven not to be as competitively priced as uh, outside Dallas-Fort Worth and uh, Missouri and other operations that they've rapidly been expanding in. Great. So, okay, great. Yep. Any other questions from directors? Are there any questions from the public? If not, I will entertain a motion. Move. Um, I, I, I seconded it. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Next, I will ask Vinny Esposito to present four projects from our Finger Lakes region. Vinny, you on? Good morning, directors. The first of the four projects I have for you today is for the Rochester Institute of Technology's new Magic Spell Studios, which is two grants totaling $13.5 million, including a $1.5 million Regional Council Capital Fund Round 4 and a $12 million State and Municipal Facilities Program grant. RIT's Magic Spell Studios is a new state-of-the-art 52,000-square-foot multimedia center that includes a sound stage, a movie theater, a mixing and color correction room, game and media development labs, incubator space, and partner suites for partner organizations that have contributed to this, like Cisco and Dell. Magic Spell Studios enhances RIT's academic focus on digital gaming, media, film, animation, and design. The project was $21 million in total and was completed in October of 2018. Second project I have for you today is for <clears throat> two grants totaling $1.6 million for Seneca County to upgrade some sewer infrastructure along the Route 318 corridor. This includes a <clears throat> $100,000 CFA grant from Regional Council Round 3 and a $1.5 million grant from CFA Round 5. This project expands the public sewer along the Route 318, which is the main commercial corridor, which includes both the Waterloo Premium Outlets as well as industrial facilities along the corridor. The total project was $8.2 million and will be completed in June of 2019. The third project I have for you is for the University of Rochester's Data Science Consortium, which is a $7.5 million upstate revitalization initiative grant for a $173 million economic growth project to create and fund the Data Science Consortium in partnership with the University of Rochester and founding partner, Harris Corporation, to develop artificial intelligence solutions to big data problems such as image analysis with Harris Corporation and satellite images that they co collect. 
This project will lead to the creation and has led to the creation of at least 184 employees just at the University of Rochester, not including the partner organizations, which now total 11 private companies, Mm -hmm. and has also already leveraged $194 million in federal research funding, which is the first benchmark that needed to be achieved to start to receive this funding, uh, which project started in June, uh, excuse me, uh, July of 2017, and will run for five years after that. The fourth and final project is also for the University of Rochester for their Eastman School of Music. Uh, This is a round five regional council capital fund grant of $450,000 to renovate their messenger hall at the Eastman School of Music's downtown Rochester campus. Um, This project was completed in 20, excuse me, October of 2018, was a $2.2 million renovation to an existing building that also houses the Eastman School of Music's community music school which is open to students from around the region from levels through high school through college Um, and eastman school of music for those of you not familiar is one of our region's primary arts and cultural institutions that competes with schools like juilliard in new york city and other world famous music schools i'd be happy to uh take any questions on any of these four projects you know vince what's interesting about uh, this is rob one of the interesting things about this is that the regional councils are getting involved in, in infrastructure, sewer, that kind of thing. That's kind of surprising to me. Um, it's kind of like where are the public servants on this, and where are the uh, where are the DOT and uh, and the uh, local bonding related to this. I just, I mean, it's it's a question we got to yeah, ask. I think you'll a, you'll especially find that in projects like this one in Seneca County where their commercial corridors are limited and the ability to attract economic growth no i'm not question i'm not questioning the validity or yeah. the i'm not qu- questioning the validity of the project it's just that it's coming to an empire state development where where this is an infrastructure you know sewer and water it, it, let me is, rephrase it is there not a state agency that supports uh sewer construction there are some for sure, uh, Environmental Facilities Corporation has funding through the regional council process each year that is the primary source, I would say. I think what's unique about our role is that it tends to be very targeted to certain areas and, and it's very timely. So, for example, uh, I think last month we had an item that was presented in Utica that had, had to be addressed fairly quickly. It was having very negative impacts on the county to, uh, to expand to allow businesses to expand. And in this case, this is a near a business district that isn't generating sufficient revenues in and of itself to expand, but with, with the improvements may get there. I think is what happens with the regional councils and with the ESD is we can be much more targeted and we're, I think we can be more quick. Well, I, I, I'm not questioning the validity no, I get or it. even our approving of it. But it's kind of like, this is infrastructure, you know, this is nuts and bolts stuff. Uh, sewer and water is kind of a basic. I mean, you know, streets and roads. And, and it just strikes me that it's, we're seeing more of this. And uh, it's kind of ironic. It's where, where is everybody else? I mean, who, who did it before we did it? It's still getting done. It's just such a large need. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, to, to, to major thing. But I, I think the, Bob I'm making an observation that it's interesting that regional councils are now being involved in infrastructure, such as water and sewer. I get that that they are more responsive. The problem that I have is where are the public servants that should be equally, if not more, responsive? That's all. I I understand the question. It, um, the only response that makes any sense is that we do it better and quicker. Well, that's probably uh, that's, right. That, but I don't know whether that satisfy you, given that uh, this is an ongoing government better, obligation. I would say better necessarily. Quicker? Certainly, certainly in a more targeted and, and quicker way. Targeted quicker. much right. more aligned with opportunities for development, right? So you, if you're in a county, you might have a broad plan for infrastructure improvements. It's very universal, right, to everybody, where we can make very targeted investments in these in this infrastructure quickly that helps realize some development opportunities. Well, clearly it's a package here. I get that. Yep. It's just a, mostly an observation, not a question. The question is where are the public servants on this? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, I would suggest, Kevin, that n- next time we get the, one of these 
uh, for infrastructure uh, that we also get an explanation as to why uh, why we're doing it. <laughs> is doing it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we should. All right. Are there any additional comments? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, I think uh, it's approved. I think I'm up to Simone Bethune, who's going to present Restore New York Communities. Am I? No, you got Kelly. Kelly. You got Kelly. Come ah. Where is this? <coughs> Good morning to the board and everybody. This is uh, Kelly. Market New York has two working capital projects. Uh, both were awarded in round eight of the REDC awards, uh, and we're asking for the board's approval on both of these working capital projects. The first project is a grant of $300,000 that was granted to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum located in Cooperstown, New York, in the Mohawk Valley, New York region. The grantee will use the Market New York grant to promote a new marketing campaign, the top nine artifacts for your favorite team, to highlight some of the more popular historical content in their archives, and to increase awareness and visitation to this unique, unique New York State tourism attraction. The second project is a grant of $687,500. It was awarded to the Heritage of Pride, an LGBTQ organization located in New York City. The marketing grant will be used to help fund an entire month of programming, events, and promotion of New York City as the host to the first World Pride event to be hosted in the United States and to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. The I Love New York team is also working very closely with this organization to further leverage this Market New York Award with our promotion, partnerships, and awareness of the event to encourage increased visitation and visitation to the surrounding regions for similar Pride events. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I have a question, Kelly. Uh, how is attendance at the Baseball Hall of Fame uh, of late? Better? Worse? How's it going? Uh, I've seen, through their reports, increased attendance, um, uh, it, uh, equal to the promotions that they're, they're running. Um, they're each targeted to different um, communities or um, niche groups, and each year, um, through the reports, I'm seeing increased attendance. Good. Are there um, any questions, any other questions from the directors about the Stonewall celebration or Baseball Hall of Fame? None? None. All right. Then I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Who's going to vote against the Baseball Hall of Fame? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the Stonewall. Or the Stonewall. 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 <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. I mean. All right. You know. I think I'm now ready for Simone Bethune. There you go. Thank you. Um, I have two Restore New York projects for consideration. The first Simone, is... Simone, move the... Sure. Right, we're, we're kind of on radio here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I have two Restore New York projects for consideration. Um, this is... The first is a $500,000 round four award to the city of Lackawanna to remediate environmental hazardous material in and around the vacant Friendship House and completely demolish the structure. The former Friendship House was a three-story, 51,156 square foot brick building on a two acre site. And the building had been an eyesore in the community for over eight years. And it was also highlighted as a priority brownfield opportunity area in need of remediation. So the city is planning to keep the site zoned as a mixed residential um, and commercial use and build up to 12 single family homes that meet the federal low and moderate income guidelines and regulations. This project was complete in August 2018 at a cost of $978,480. The second award is a round five $1 million grant to the village of Endicott to demolish two buildings measuring 30,000 square feet and 95,000 square feet. The buildings are a former Kmart and Endicott Inn. 
Uh, this project will create two shovel-ready sites for new commercial or mixed-use development in desirable locations while removing two eyesores from the community and helping to stabilize the downtown core in Endicott. Uh, we'll also improve adjacent property values and encourage additional investment in the village. <coughs> this project began in February 2019 and will be complete in April 2019 at a cost of <coughs> $1 million approximately. Um, and I can take any questions. Are there any questions from the directors, from the public? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Simone, I think you now present the uh, non-discretionary <coughs> project consent calendar. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to make a comment that in addition to my presentation on the non-discretionary calendar item, for the first item, um, we have Dr. Kevin Tracy, uh, who's the president and CEO of the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research at Northwell <coughs> Health on the phone with us, um, so he can provide some further information uh, once I'm finished. Dr. Feinstein, do you have um, any comments you'd like to make? I'm sorry, it's Dr. Kevin Tracy. Uh, yes. No. Thank you so much, and good morning. I'm Kevin Tracy, and I'm the president and CEO of the Feinstein Institute. I uh, like to just add that the Feinstein is the home for research for all of Northwell Health, uh, the system of 23 hospitals across New York and Long Island metropolitan area. The Feinstein's headquartered in Manhasset, and there we built an internationally recognized role as world leaders in the science of molecular medicine, behavioral science, and health outcomes. Just out of curiosity, who, who is heading Northwell at the moment? Michael Dowling is the president and CEO of Northwell, and he has been uh, supporting our efforts to lead the world in the science and research of molecular medicine, behavioral health outcomes research, and cancer. But most recently, we've invented a new field of medicine called bioelectronic medicine. And this has positioned New York and Nassau County as the global center of a new field of medicine. Bioelectronic medicine combines well, no, I, I don't want to get into the details. I just want you to say hello to Mike, who uh, used to work uh, for <laughs> me uh, at uh, the Department of Social Services when he was a state employee. He will still remember, I'm sure. At any rate. I uh, will do that this afternoon. All right. Um, are there any questions? Uh, actually, sorry. <laughs> I have to present the the actual grant. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah, I didn't present yet. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to be um, hopefully making a grant of $30 million to the, uh, from the Transform and Investment Program to the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research. And the Institute will be modernizing approximately 20,000 square feet of the original building at 350 Community Drive in Manhasset. Um, the renovation project will allow Feinstein to create state-of-the-art laboratory space in areas of the building that are either inefficiently designed for current use or have historically contained offices that are no longer required within the building footprint. The newly created space will allow Feinstein to increase their full-time research staff by 10 percent, thus accelerating to market new technologies, diagnose, and treat disease. The project is expected to be complete in June 2021. Um, and the second award will be a Senate-sponsored local assistant grant of 300000 to Glimmer Glass Opera Theater, doing business as Glimmer Glass Festival. This project will invive, involve upgrades to the 900-seat Alice Bush Opera Theater courtyard walkway area, um, along with new soil, plantings, and paving tiles, and repairs to the roof. The theater is located on Otsego Lake, and it has deteriorated and requires upgrades to continue serving the 1 million visitors and 10,000 seasonal employees who have passed through its doors since 1987. This project is expected to be complete in June 2020. Any uh, comments, questions from the directors? Um, I, I, I have a question. Uh, so, Dr. Tracy, the. Um, on, on the, the research that you do and you talk about the behavioral outcomes, do those, um, uh, certainly New York City, New York State, we've got diverse communities. Are those outcomes used to help communities across the state? 
Um, and and I. And, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, I'll let sorry. you, yep, I'll let you talk. Good, absolutely, yes. I apologize for my enthusiasm, but we have a, a major commitment led by um, our chairman of medicine and our head of health outcomes research, Tom McGinn, as well as a major effort led by our head of psychiatry and, and head of behavioral health research, John Kane. And both of them are extremely committed to using the power of the data in our enormous electronic medical record uh, to um, give the best care to the most diverse population on earth uh, with the most cost effective and outcomes uh, effective um, or successful um, uh, methods. Uh, we, have, we have programs looking at uh, opioid abuse we have, uh, and, and, and addiction. We have programs looking at sort of the major unsolved um, upstream problems to, 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 to difficult healthcare issues that intersect at the community with the provider. We're very committed to exactly this space. I apologize for interrupting you. No, 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 I, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I just note because at my company, we've done a lot of research in terms of comparing communities for health outcomes across the country and, you know, have seen great disparities in terms of, of, of outcomes. And I would just want to make sure that um, that that research is being used to um, in a sense, equitize uh, some of the health outcomes in communities around the state. Oh. Absolutely. I, I would argue that our position as the largest health care provider in the New York and Long Island region, combined with our commitment to research to address these very questions, is how we will find the answer. The answer won't come out of a government study, I don't think. It's going to come uh, from, from the federal government or from from down on high. It's going to come from grassroots efforts like your companies and ours to, 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 to be in the communities and understand the problems and solve the upstream problems that lead to the downstream expenses and, and suffering. You're getting uh, federal funds for a lot of the R&D research that you're doing, right? Yes, we um, our, our funding structure for research support is like um, all major research institutes and universities. We have three primary sources of funding. The federal government, uh, which is the National Institutes of Health, uh, the Department of Defense, and the National Science Foundation. These, these are major funders for us. The second major funding is strategic partnerships and philanthropy. So we've done large corporate um, strategic partnerships with companies like GE and United Therapeutics, which have, have garnered a lot of attention. And we have uh, significant philanthropic support. Uh, and the third uh, source of our of our support for our research projects is Northwell Health itself, which is a major benefactor of the Feinstein Institute. Yeah, because so if you get the federal federal uh, assistance on this uh, research, it has to be propagated to the world. So that's where you get around the the balkanization of it. It it, it uh, any. Research that's created by federal government grants has got to be propagated. So that's we that's agreed. The law. Uh, we, you know, I, I like to I like to say that people people tend to think that scientists and researchers like to keep secrets, but it's actually the opposite. We we discover things and publish them as soon as possible for the world. Are there any other questions from uh, directors? Any questions from the public? If not, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Next, we've got two New York State. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, two New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund items, which will be presented by Clayton Besh and Momo B. Thank you, Board. Uh, this is Clayton Bash in Albany. Uh, New York Ventures would like to ask the Board for authorization for the New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund to co-invest up to $300,000 in Vital VO in their current convertible note round of $2.5 million. This would be a follow-on to the investment of $1 million in the Seed 2A round that the fund made back in August of 2017. VitalVO is a Troy, New York startup that has commercialized IP from RPI. 
to develop a LED light solution that disinfects surfaces safely. Rather than risking cancer as intense UV light does, Vitalvio's patented application of a specific light wave uh, kills uh, only bacteria, mold, and fungus and is safe for humans and pets and plants. Colleen uh, Costello, the CEO and co-founder, has closed contracts with leading lighting manufacturers and distributors focused on healthcare, education, transportation, and now sales through Home Depot and Amazon for kitchen, home kitchens and bathrooms. The company also is building strategic relationships with, among others, the leading home fan and kitchen range manufacturer. Our friends at Regeneron is part of their expansion up here in the capital region. And interestingly, the cruise ship builders and their needs. We wanted to also note that the Investment Review Committee approved this follow-on investment and that all the leading investor investment funds are continuing to invest along with New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund. Are there any questions? I, I have a question. Um, actually, a couple of questions. How long has this company been in operation? And I assume you've seen the financials of the company? I, I, uh, the question I heard was how long the company has been. How long? In yeah, has how long has the company correct has been operational, and uh, I assume you've seen the financials and I guess the uh, the revenues and the P and L of the company. Yes, we we've seen the revenue of the P and L, and the company itself has been in operation for six years. So, can you elaborate a little bit on the P and L? <coughs> what what? Particular information would you like for Again, the, if you know? you're investing in a company, you just want to know how profitable the company is going to be. It's a startup, I'm, correct? I, I, I'm very sorry, but I, I can only hear half but of your question. Pull the, pull the turn, microphone turn, right turn, next turn to you. The, the We're interested in, in knowing how well the company is doing financially. Is it on? There you go. Ah, it is I'm on. sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, the company it has a run rate currently of. Uh, Eight months. Uh, it has a, a. The plan now is to to close this round and then to do a follow-on round of uh, seven million in uh, early fall. The uh, as far as the um, P and L is concerned, uh, revenue is concerned. Um, last uh, 2016, it had a sales of. Five hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and then this year was one point two million dollars. So the trend is our friend. So it doubled its revenue, and it has a pipeline uh, potential of uh, seven of four million dollars of revenue. And these notes are privately placed notes, <laughs> or are they? I'm sorry, are these notes privately placed, or are they registered with the SEC? These are pri these are privately well they're privately but they're convertible notes that convert to equity at the next price round. And do you know if there are other investors? How many yes, other? There are six other no excuse me. Uh, professional venture capitalists. There are six other funds, and then there are other uh, high net individuals as well. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. So we are asking the directors to approve a follow-on investment of up to 138000 in a Series A2 preferred equity into Token. To date, Token has received $1,750,000 from the New York State Innovation Venture Capital Fund as part of a Series A financing. It is a woman-led company based in Rochester, manufactures a biometric encrypted wearable security device. The device's companion software platform allows the ring to be integrated into various security applications, including computer logins, mobile payments, transit cards, and smart locks for home and auto. Following our initial investment in early 2018, the company has completed a successful field test with a Fortune 50 technology firm that demonstrated the technology. A larger pilot deployment is planned for Q2 2019. Notwithstanding this progress, the company is behind plan in terms of the revenue due to design and strategy decisions. Over the past year, 
The company made a number of critical updates to the hardware, finalizing feature integrations with HID, Google, Microsoft, depend on external partner timelines that kept moving, and upgrading electronics for battery efficiency. In order to fund its activity over the next 18 to 24 months, Token is raising up to $3.5 million in Series A2 preferred equity based on a fully diluted pre-money valuation of $40 million. New York Ventures will invest up to $130,000 into this round, with the balance being provided by private sector investors led by blockchain ventures. As part of the due diligence process, New York Ventures and an external investment review committee evaluated the company's business plan and growth prospects as well as the terms of the investment. As a result of this analysis, we and the investment review committee both agree that the market opportunity and the growth potential offered by the New York State Company warrants an investment by the fund and recommend its approval. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from the directors? And, and given that, it's, that this is um, equity, we, we invest at the same terms as the other investors? Yes. Right. 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 Any other questions from the directors? Any questions from the public? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Move it. Is there a second? Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Momo. Thank you. Uh, Samantha Baldock is up next, and we and will present an item relating to the market order program. Samantha. Can you hear me? No. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> the directors are being requested to approve a dairy research and development contract with Cornell University for $1,553,081. This contract will, fu will be funded through the Dairy Promotion Order and is part of the Market Order Program. Research services include 14 research and development projects over a span of one year with built-in renewals for up to five additional years. These projects will be conducted through Cornell's Northeastern Dairy Food Research Center and the Milk Quality Improvement Program. Topics of research include developing a rapid method to determine raw milk protein and fat quality, upcycling dairy byproducts into a new category of value-added consumer beverages, and identifying risk factors for post-processing contamination in school milk across New York State. Happy to answer any questions. Are there questions? From the directors? Are there questions from the public? I will entertain a motion. Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. <coughs> now I think I'm going to turn it over to Kevin, who's going to introduce a, way, a new process of our dealing with administrative actions, which will result in saving the time of the director <laughs> in the future. Is that right, Kevin? That is exactly right. Good morning, directors. Uh, as Acting Chair Cesar said, we are proposing going forward uh, to help streamline, streamline our board meetings. Uh, we're implementing a new process related to administrative actions section of our agenda. Generally, this section will include things like contracts, leases, contract extensions, procurement of services such as legal or, or consulting services. You will continue to see, receive the written materials for each item in the board uh, in your board portals, but rather than having presentations made on each, we'll provide you a high-level summary, uh, and then you will, at the conclusion of the summary, will entertain motion. I'm sorry, questions and. Uh, and discussion uh, from the public. ESD staff that is most knowledgeable about each of the items will be available for questions. We'll then call for a motion to approve the entire slate of administrative actions. Uh, today, we are presenting 13 administrative items for your consideration and for which you have received the written materials. The summary is as follows. An approval of a pre-qualified list of real estate appraisers, an authorization for a lease renewal uh, with the New York State Office of Trade and Tourism in Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, 
approval of the transfer and disposition for the Shattagay Correctional Facility to the New York State Office of General Services, five consultant service contracts relating to the Global New York Program, the Military <laughs> Base Closing Program, and certain Western New York initiatives, as well as five legal service contracts. <coughs> um, with that, I would turn it back over to the acting chair for questions, comments. Um, well, do we need to approve the new process, or is that uh, no. we don't? No. So I, I can get the, directly to the items on, that are included. Yes, sir. Are there any questions from uh, the members? Have uh, any of you gone to the office in Puerto Rico? Yes, I have. I have. I mean, it's very impressive. Mm, very, very. Uh, I, Every time I go to Puerto Rico, I go to that office or, or store also. And I tell you, the staff are always working, doing their job, and it's a really, really impressive operation. Good. Glad I to hear that, because I had, yeah. I'd had some questions about it. But um, uh, I, I do have a comment. Um, the When you go through all of these items, we don't get a chance to hear or understand whether or not we're having a beneficial impact on minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, will, will I therefore not, in, not, not get to know how well we're doing or how badly we're doing? No, absolutely. And we will present, on, I think, on an annual basis uh, what the performance numbers are. Um, no, I know that. I'm just concerned that some of these contracts, I, for example, I'll look at the legal services, for example. I don't know whether... Uh, we either get uh, women-owned uh, firms or minority law firms getting contracts. Um, I mean, I suppose I could ask every time one of these items comes up, but it might be interesting if you would uh, tell us uh, if there are people who bid uh, who are from uh, the minority and women-owned business community. Sure. I mean, I think such information is in the materials, but we can you know, look at separately noting in the instances where, where that's the case. Good. Yep. Well, the other alternative would be, can everybody hear me? Um, the other alternative is, you know, in the terms of hiring the law firms, is to sort of gauge them in terms of their diversity programs and uh, how many women and minorities they actually um, have as partners or associates. I mean, I think that's another way of looking at it. It, it, it's become an issue, I think, in many of the law firms, as yes. you know. Yes, it is. What, what, one of the law firms once announced to all of their partners, does everybody remember that? And there was all white, all white males, I think, or basically. So just so you know, when we... Uh, I can't hear you. You don't have... Grab a mic, Liz. Just so you know, when we procure legal services, we have a goal of 30%. And the way we usually structure that is we hire a majority firm and a minority firm on a large project, but we also, when we can, hire just an MWBE firm, as we've done in one of these, to handle the entirety of the real estate work or the other work that's being handled on a project. So it may have, on, on, on one of these projects, the Brooklyn Development Center, we have a, a woman-owned law firm that will handle 100 percent of the work, but we do always have a goal of 30 percent. Good. And, and that's the case for all services, right? I mean, yeah. we no, I, it, it, this is not criticism. This is a question about the process and in the future whether the board will be able to, uh, to identify the, your continued progress, which I, I know will occur. Absolutely. It's a good point. Uh, We're learning. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a, a motion then to approve all of the items that uh, were included in Kevin's uh, Move. item? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Is there any further business? I don't think there is, which means I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <coughs> Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. All right, let's hear for him, huh? Wow. Uh, Thank you. Are you doing all right? One hour. Less than one hour.